All right there, uh, Tommy Gunn, I got your uh, decked out Striker 955 version one all done and completed for you. Uh, we have a full tune out done to this radio. We did not upgrade the finals because you're just going into a two pill or possibly a straight four and uh, for pre-driver. So uh, uh, you won't need the extra output from the larger uh, finals or more powerful transistors there. Uh, we have an upgraded echo board that it has modifications done to it to expand the bandwidth, make it fuller and sound nicer. Uh, that echo board is preset perfect on the inside, so it's a knob that you don't have to worry about. Uh, this uh, volume DL is the original echo board. You're just going to keep it off. It does nothing anymore anyway. It's just a dead control for looks. This echo switch, you're going to keep it to the off position right there in the center uh, because the original board will still engage and it adds a little bit of mud in there. Uh, this is your variable power. It's the back control here. This is what you'll adjust to set your dead key running into all your amplifiers. I set it to, uh, I think I got you about three quarters of a watt on the bottom end and it'll go all the way up to like 17 watts or so there. So you should be able to get anywhere that you need to on the variable itself. This is the talk back control, the small control right here on the front. It's got a little clicker on it. Um, so this one here, whenever you're doing your MP3, which you got that option on your radio too, whenever you're doing your MP3 with line level recording and you want to capture your side of, of, of the recording so people can hear your voice, uh, like on talkback, you're just going to click that talkback on just barely. If you use it in moderation, you might can raise it up some, but you'll never probably be able to go above 12 because it'll squeal and you don't want it to squeal and then give you problems with, you know, dealing with some feedback because it is a power microphone that I got you modified and, um, you know, those can be sensitive uh, to feedback, you know, when you're trying to run talk back. So you can either just barely click it on. You'll never have any sensitivity by doing that. Or you can run it up uh, somewhere in that threshold from on to 12 o'clock, never above 12. So I'll click that back off here. Um, other than that, we've got hi-fi transmit done. We've got hi-fi receive with an upgraded filter done as well. We have a five-band internal equalizer. I have a variable tone control. I can't see because I got messages coming on my phone blocking my video, but I've got a variable tone control here. Uh, the uh, this all the way to the right is maximum bass. All the way to the left on it would be maximum treble. Where I've got it adjusted now uh, is about 230 or so on the uh, variable bass control, uh, so or on the variable tone control rather. You're going to lean towards the bass side about three quarters of the way up. And this is going to be like this for most microphones. Uh, you know, you're going to be, you probably never go back further than, you know, to the left further than 12 o'clock, you know, back towards 11 or any of that zone, uh, unless you use like a studio mic, something that needs a ton of treble uh, to uh, balance with all the bass that they have. Uh, so with the modified microphones that I do, the D104s, the 878, they're all going to sit here somewhere close to that 3 o'clock position, roughly. If your voice is a little different, you might lean towards, you know, uh, 12 or above. Uh, the uh, handheld Superstar microphone that sounds real good with them too, the stock CM4 sounds great with my radio. This is the best of the stock mics, uh, you know, for hi-fi. And that one you may be able to go, um, you know, a little closer to wide open on the bass. You'll still crack it open just a little bit towards the treble side. So uh, that'll kind of give you an idea. I've got it set proper now for the 878 with my voice or pretty close to where it needs to be. Uh, other than that, we also have the uh, MP3 with line level recording that's going to sit here out the uh, back of your radio. So you got your normal external speaker jack, PA jack, they call it CW, I don't know why they label it as that, but it's a PA jack. Uh, and then we have the MP3 with line level recording, that is the jack that I added to the radio. You already have a cord and ferrite, so you just plug it into there and it works the same way as the Cobra 29 uh, that you used over there of mine. Um, and. Uh, uh, it's uh, other than on the Cobra, you don't have to cut on talkback. It automatically picks up your voice line level, or not line level, but automatically picks up the talkback version of your voice. This one here, when you cut this on, it, that's what you'll have to do to pick up your side of the line level when you're recording people and you want to hear your side of the conversation. And you know, as I told you, this is only talkback. When you pick up your voice on the same MP3 circuit that you're using, that is only talkback. It's not your real sound over the air. Your real sound over the air will be what I demonstrate in the video when I plug into my line level, line level cord that goes into my monitor radio. That's true audio over the air. This little talkback portion that you cut on with the MP3 when you're capturing your voice, that's, that's literally talkback. Same way as what it was with the Cobra. 
on my own radio, my own base station at home, I have a relay built in that whenever I key the microphone, it automatically swaps over to my monitor radio to capture my voice line level and others line level. That's that dual monitor, you know, set up the dual monitor setup that I, that I offer. It's just an extra option that can be done if someone had a second radio, second monitor to listen to themselves on. That way you can capture both sides line level. But the talk back works just fine uh, for, for capturing your voice. It's just not true line level. Just want to make sure everyone knew that's why I'm explaining it. Um, uh, other than that, I think I've listed all the options. So we got Full tune, upgraded echo board with mods, hi-fi transmit, hi-fi receive with filter. Uh, we have the five band internal equalizer, the variable tone control out here. And then we also have the MP3 with line level recording. And then we have the modified 878 bass microphone. I've already set the setting on the bottom where it needs to be. It does have an adjustment to adjust the level if you needed to tweak that slightly at any point. Uh, I have a, um, a heat shrink and ferrite on here to protect it from RF and also act as a better stress relief from uh, breaking a wire on the microphone. So everything uh, should be uh, good to go for you. So we'll go ahead and test the output, see what we got. First, before anything else, I'll check carrier and see what our range is here. So we can key all the way up to, looks like about uh, 18 watts or so. And I'll cut this carrier all the way down. Uh, all the way down is three quarters of a watt and three quarters of a watt is actually still clean even with these stock vinyls It's kind of difficult to achieve uh, To keep it from having you know bias issues like with these stock vinyls uh, on the strikers uh, But that's about as low as I can get safely, you know, usually with these uh, 520s But anyway, so about three quarters of a watt all the way down go all the way up and looks like we can get all the way up to about 18 watts carrier Still clean here. I can fully modulate it. Everything is uh, good. Just like it should be there I can go ahead and uh, uh, go up to my 200 scale in the dosi, and we're modulating to roughly about 90 watts peak. Check on the LP, about 115 watts. Check on this LP 700, showing about 100, and 100 watts. Uh, we'll look at the 25 watt slug, see if we're pegging it out, we are. Go to, let me just put a bigger slug here. I don't wanna test on a 250 watt slug. So I'm gonna check and see what our average is from a higher carry. Keep in mind, this is a higher dead key. So we're looking like 44 average, 44 bird uh, from a higher dead key. So let's cut the dead key down just for craps and giggles. We'll put it say around a couple watts, two or three watts and see what it does then. So I guess about, uh, it might be realistic that you might be running around a couple watt carrier going into your two pill and then into the other and into the other. So that's uh, roughly around two watts there. Uh, now I will modulate it, and actually, matter of fact, I might get, it might stay under 25 bird from a 2 watt carrier. It might still peg it out though. It probably will. Let's see. Yeah, it still overtakes 25 watt slug. So we'll put a, a 100 watt in here and see what we got average there. 100 watt slug, bottom scale. It's like we're still gonna do about 32 bird, even if you key at 2 watts. So you're definitely gonna have to bypass the one pill stage in your one by two. Um, uh, lower carrier modulated looks good. I raise the carrier all the way up Modulate again still looks good on the spectrum analyzer. So everything is like it should be there So I got this here. This is here and all of these tests is with the gain at the proper setting right here is where it sounds the best to me and matter of fact, it sounds the best here with the D104, with the Superstar CM4, with the H78. This is where the gain sounds the best. I still left a little headroom regardless, just so you have it if you need it. You might decide you want to put a noise canceling mic, and then you might need just a little, you know, you might need to cut this gain wide open uh, to fully modulate those, or same goes for a studio mic. They're not as strong, so you might need that full gain for it as well. So the headroom is there if you need it. You know, that's what a mic gain control is for. Um, all right, so uh, I guess we'll go ahead and test and see what it sounds like over the air. And uh, let me plug in the, your 878 microphone. Uh, I'm not going to be monitoring, but I'm sure that everything sounds well enough. You know, uh, y'all have heard plenty of videos of me varying the tone control and all that. I'm just going to leave it where it's set, leave the gain where it's set, leave the volume where it's set, and it should be close enough to get a good idea of what it sounds like. Um, and uh, we'll go ahead and plug this in and see what we got.
All right there, uh, uh, Tommy Gunn. I'm checking out this uh, Striker uh, 955. I got this modified 878 base station microphone, and I'm letting you hear what this thing sounds like out here in the world of sound. Hey, uh, Tommy Gunn, letting you see what it does with this 878 base station microphone. I, I wish I had a CM4 out just for craps and giggles, but I'm not actually even listening with my voice at the moment. Hey, uh, you know, actually, I sent you a video with what it sounds like on the CM4, so I'm not going to worry about hooking all that up. But anyway, that should be a good long conversation, letting you hear everything right here, just the way that it sounds on this end. Hey, uh, Tommy Gunn, I'm checking out this uh, Striker 955 with this modified 878 base station microphone. I uh, appreciate it. All right, I got it unplugged here, and uh, that, that's everything but showing the MP3 or variable, you know, adjusting around on the tone, but I've got plenty of gates and videos showing that, and you're aware of how that stuff operates, uh, so we're going to kill it here. Thanks again, Jason. Appreciate the business, and uh, we'll talk to you later on.